In this video, I'm going to focus more on an event that happened after things had gone very bad for a lot of people in the community. Uh, it's actually about uh, four court attendance notices that happened uh, in March 2017. But before I do that, I just wanted to make a quick note to people that are looking for information on Balance the Scales on Facebook. The um, I'm trying not to make it thousands and thousands of posts. Uh, so I've actually attached one link as a main heading or post. And in the comments, I've put other links so that you can follow through. Now in this particular one, uh, this is Tamity and Sarah Kirkwood and their family. Um, there is an affidavit that uh, there's a link for it somewhere down this page and I will at one stage uh, also post that link in here so that you don't have to go hunting through for information. So if it's related to somebody that um, you should find it in that one post. Uh, some of them have actually looked for where it says that there are comments because most of those comments are actually links. So, um, oh, where, where is it? And what I've tried to put on this page is anything and everything to do with the nightcap on Minjimble. Um it's pretty much uh, like here you can click on that will take you direct to the Tweed Shire Council uh, you can type in the address you can see for yourself there is no development application there has never been pre-approved development application for 322 Kyogle Road which is the main uh, address of what's going on and where all the issues are surrounding. There are other properties involved in this larger development but they're somewhat separate players even though some of them are at the top also working in with the um, people like Adrian Brennock and Mark McMurtry and Richard Mote. Uh, there are others involved that are landowners that are all cooperating at the same level and intermingling in the commercial side of it at Mount Burrell, which is also an advertised part of the nightcap on Minjimble, is the Mount Burrell uh, commercial district. Uh, they own the town. This is something that AB has quite uh, often said, you know, uh, not only in his promotional videos but in his Dick of the Year award you know he owns the town so anyway what we're going to get on to now is four court attendance summonses now I'd like to actually advise you of um, be able to read you out the conclusion of these uh, court attendances uh, but I don't actually have that document in front of me or that documentation. So at this stage, all I'm going to do is read out what's on these four. And there is four of them because there are four people that have been summoned to appear. And they have been summoned to appear on the 28th of March 2017 in the Mamulamba lo uh, Local Court. And they have been summoned by private prosecution by Gillian Norman. Now, the four people that have been summoned have been Adrian Brennock, a.k.a. Andrew Brennan, Richard Mote, Mark James Darwin, and Steve McSween. Now, all of these are for separate um, details of offence. So I will deal with each one separately. So in this instance, the prosecutor, a private prosecution, is Gillian Norman and the defendants are as named. 
Now the first one, Adrian Brannock, aka Andrew Brennan. Now the details of the offence, the description of offence. The defendant, Adrian Brannock, being sole shareholder in Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited with a single share value one dollar, co-director of Rainmaker Eco Investments Proprietary Limited and a founding officer of Bulla Bulla Community Village Trust Association slash association by deception that is by failure to disclose to investors known restrictions on the use of the land by hiding financial records by failure to issue promised shares to investors including the plaintiff or prosecutor Julia Norman by deceptive violation of the company trustee by promising to transfer company control to investors then refusing to do so by slander and defamation of investors including the plaintiff Julia Norman with intent to obstruct and intimidate rightful owners and to drive them off the land preventing their legitimate use of the land dishonestly obtained a 640 acre property at 322 Kyogle Road Mount Burrell the rightfully co-owned property of investors in Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited. That is the description of offence. It is then there are headings of times and dates of offence from February 2000 to uh, 2015 to present dash ongoing. Location of offence 322 Kyogle Road, Mount Burrell electronic communication the offices of wall and co lawyers Malambimbi and the offices of Rainmaker Eco Investments Surface Paradise the heading of short particulars says dishonestly obtained property by deception the heading statutory provisions describing offence Crimes Act 1900 New South Wales section 192E1A and then uh, that ends there by those uh, details of offence were served uh, by hand lodged with the court and summons to appear on that one so that's Adrian Brennock also known as Adrian uh, sorry Andrew Brennan. Now, uh, also appearing that same day was Richard John Moat. Details of offence, description of offence. The defendant, Richard John Moat, been director of Wollumbin Dreamtime Proprietary Limited and an officer of the Bulla Bulla Community Village Trust slash Association, did by de deception to wit a by defamatory and hominin attacks on the plaintiff Julia Norman and other investors b by manipulating votes to enable implementation of special resolutions disadvantageous to investors deceptively influence slash mislead the Bulla Bulla Community Village Trust slash Association and unit holders in the land asset owned by Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited with the intention to endorse illegal actions to wit A. Fraud B. Larceny and C. Proposed disposal of the land asset and by so doing did dishonest dishonestly obtain financial advantage to wit a retention of defrauded defrauded investors deposits and loans totaling over 1.5 million paid for consideration in the Bulla Bulla village community land share that happened to fail including a hundred and twenty thousand investment paid 
by the plaintiff, Gillian Norman, in August 2015. B. Removal of the plaintiff, Gillian Norman's, belongings, including a fully equipped Fiat Ducato Banksia mobile home valued over 90000 in December 2015. The defendant, Richard Mote, by the same said deception, did also cause financial disadvantage to wit a to the plaintiff and other members with investment in the Buller Community Buller Buller Community Village Trust Association slash Wollumbun Horizons Proprietary Limited by failure of consideration in the land share and retention of investments. B to the plaintiff by detention and or destruction of the plaintiff's Gillian Norman's belongings, established agricultural product projects and mobile home. So the times and date of offence uh, for that was from August 2015 to present-ongoing. The location of offence, 322 Kyogle Road, Mount Burrell, electronic communication, the offices of Rothwall Lawyer, Mullumbimby, the offices of Ray Mocha Eco Investments, Surface Paradise. Short particulars, dishonestly obtaining financial advantage or cause disadvantage by deception. The statutory for provisions describing offence, Crimes Act 1900, New South Wales, Section 192E Fraud, Section 192E, Subsection 2B Fraud. And that ends that particular summons for on court attendance notice that was uh, legally served and everything for Richard Moat to appear. So in case anyone just missed it in that, uh, pretty much uh, someone's taken off with Gillian Norman's mobile home worth 90000 and I don't think she's seen hide nor hair of it ever since. Gone. Along with her 120000 invested in the place. But we will look now at the third defendant appearing that day, Mark James Darwin. So the details of offence, description of offence. The defendant, Mark James Darwin, being marketing manager of Wollumbun Horizons Proprietary Limited, sole shareholder of Wollumbun Dreamtime Proprietary Limited, director of Rainmaker Eco Investments Proprietary Limited, and an officer of Bulla Bulla Villi Community Village Trust, slash association by use of deception to it undue influence misleading advertising and dishonest verbal promotion of ethical investment opportunities in a community land share of a 648 acre property at 322 Kyogo Road Mount Burrell owned by Wollumbun Horizons Proprietary Limited and managed by the Bulla Bulla Community Village Trust slash association. The defendant having prior knowledge that the offered land is environmentally protected, reserved for water catchment, and the defendant, Mark James Darwin, having been repeatedly forewarned by Tweedshire Council that habitation sites yet failed to provide sorry that didn't that habitation sites yet failed to provide disclosure of such and so wrongfully induced victims of the deception to invest as unit holders who promised share occupancy of the land was later obstructed Having intention to facilitate illegal actions, to wit fraud, 
and by so doing does honestly obtain financial disadvantage. A $120,000 investment paid by the plaintiff Gillian Norman in August 2015 plus deposits and unrequited loans totaling over $1.5 million from other investors. The defendant, Mark James Darwin, by the same said deception, did also cause financial dis disadvantage to the plaintiff and other investors. Failure of consideration in the land share, failure of restitution of death, debt and loss of investment. The times and dates of offences from February 2015 to present dash ongoing. Now I might uh, also point out that when it's said ongoing this is in 2017 and that has to be taken in that context. Um, I'm just pointing that out. So that is um, Mark Darwin's appearance or a notice to appear on the 28th of March 2017. And the final notice to appear was for Steve McSween. And the details of offence, the description of offence, the defendant, Steve McSween, did steal property belonging to the plaintiff, value $100,000, including a furnished Fiat Ducato Banksia mobile home valued at over 90000 fully equipped with solar panels, awning, TV, air conditioner, shower, portaloo, bed, heater, microwave, microwave oven, gas stove, cooking utilities and built-in built in storage containing personal belongings and valuables including bullion, clothes, shoes, essential oils, bedding cushions, sentimental effects, books, project archives and legal files. So that's what was in the mobile home. Then listed separately are the uh, following items. A camper kitchen and storage facility with canopies, bamboo poles, seven tarps, two tents, tent poles, camping equipment, composting toilet, shelving, floor covering, rugs, two large folding tables, four wooden tables, one glass table, three camp chairs, two hammocks, two bean bags, a three burner camp stove, three gas bottles, cooking utensils, crockery cutlery, a greenhouse with shelving, garden implements, tools, seeds, two solar panels, two batteries, battery charger, two water pumps, six bins, three large water barrels, materials in process of manufacture being blended cosmetic and essential oils, glass bottles, display materials and display stands, two Mercedes SUV tires, a large biochar hopper, several large storage storage containers with clothes, shoes, home business effects, books, archive files, documents belonging to court matters, project documents, valuable sentimental and personal belongings, clay sculptures and artwork, flowering plants, vegetables, bamboo saplings, shrubs, fruit saplings and seedlings. Additional property in the plaintiff's lawful care, Gillian Norman's lawful care, been the property of James Merrill and Catherine Dawn that was also removed or detained without consent of the owners or the plaintiff Julian Norman including a pop-top caravan with annex and a fully equipped second camp kitchen. The time and date of offence was on or around December the 6th 2016 uh, 2000, <laughs> 2016. Location of offence 3222 Kyogre Road, Mount Burrell. Short particulars Larceny. Statutory, 
provision describing offence, Crimes Act 1900, New South Wales, Section 117. So that ends the four court attendance notices for the four different people to attend the yes the Moolumbah local court on the 28th of March 2017. Oh, I'm sorry if I got a bit tongue-tied there. It was a little bit uh, legalese and uh, tripping over my own tongue. So. Um, We've got uh, four people that were summonsed to court. Let's recap. We've got uh, Adrian Brennock, a.k.a. Andrew Brennan, Richard John Moat, Mark James Darwin, and Steve McSween. And what was put forward in the detailed offences includes a lot of uh, stolen or allegedly stolen property. Uh, not only belonging to Julia Norman, but to other people as well. So, uh, as I said, I do not have uh, any documentation in front of me to uh, tell you how that actually went that day. Uh, I will endeavour to find out and read the judgment summary on that. Uh, a private prosecution is always very difficult and uh, especially when you've got people that uh, well they've got uh, what well, seems to be an infinite source to use lawyers uh, I would actually say that they're using investors money to constantly fight off all the allegations rather than addressing them I mean, there is one thing that would really clear things up. I mean, you go to their website, you look at, they will show you all these judgments and all these injunctions and all this other stuff. But the one thing they don't show you is the pre-approved DA. I mean, this is pretty damn easy. I've got uh, a pre-approved DA for a completely different, uh, two different uh, property addresses for three lots that aren't even involving 3222 Kyogre Road that has never had any pre-existing approval, let alone any DA approval. Because, as was stated, it is actually under an environmentally protected status and it's a reserved for water catchment. So these are serious considerations that the council are going to take um, on board, as well as the very strong cultural and heritage ad aspect of it. This is sacred land. And uh, what I found out a couple of days ago, uh, it's called Nightcap on Minjimbal. It's not even Minjimbal land. It's not even Minjimbal country. So you could say they're kind of little trespassing. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be another story. I wanted to keep this short and to the point, just to give you a bit of a rundown of one of the things that has gone on, because there have been so many things. Just a summary of this one instance and how this gutsy woman she took these four guys to court to try and do something. Because, uh, yes, try and get a cop to do something. Well, that's where I went in and I found out uh, what doesn't work. Now I'm going to produce what does work. And uh, with that, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Catch you next time.